so a pleasant morning to everybody so in this particular session we'll be discussing about one of the very important subject which is basics for civil engineering as well as mechanical engineering so name of this particular subject is engineering mechanics so friends let's discuss the subject engineering mechanics so initially to begin with this subject we'll discuss about the brief introduction to civil engineering and also we'll be discussing about resolution of forces ropes and pulleys and all the forces acting on it and we'll also discuss about the uh, rollers and cylinder and in this we'll also have parallelogram law triangle law okay polygon law etc okay and along with this we'll also discuss about lamy's theorem okay let's discuss all these topics one by one in this particular chapter let's start with the discussion so initially to begin with let's discuss about some important definitions so first what is a particle particle is a body that has mass but it doesn't have any particular dimension it can be a very tiny particle okay so composition of all the particles in the environment makes a matter okay next rigid body rigid body is the same it's also a body which has both mass as well as dimension initially particle didn't have any dimension but this has both mass as well as dimension and what is a deformable body a body where the changes in the distance between two points is ne not neglected okay the distance between any two points between any two particles even if it is a very small particle we have to consider the changes in the distance between two points so this you can see this is a picture of a beam it is having two rollers hanging over here as well as fixed ro uh, fixed support okay it is also having a fixed support along with the two rollers and there is tension occurring in this direction and compression in the this direction also discussing about the idealization of different forces in engineering mechanics let us discuss about the four important four important things that is particle point load rigid body and continuum so particle as we have already discussed it has mass but it doesn't have any dimension that is what is the definition of particle as well what is a point load when there are point load is nothing but say for example this is a beam it is having two point loads acting in this direction and the point load can be also acting in the from the top direction okay on this particular beam so this is also point load which is acting upwards because it has the ruler or any okay fixed support acting over here so this can be considered as a forces or point load okay so if the area of contact is very small then the force acting on this particular beam can be neglected if the area of contact is very large then definitely we have to consider it since the area of contact will be less in some particular cases that time we can neglect the force okay acting on that particular body discussing about the rigid body what is a rigid body in that the dimensions and distance between the two particles don't change even after applying any load okay that is a rigid body that we have already dis discussed it has the mass as well as dimension but it also uh, the important factor is that the distance between the particle don't change even after the application of any load but here in case of deformable body the distance between the two points can be changed okay two points or two particles can be changed but in case of rigid body that is not possible what is continuum continuum is nothing but the continuous distribution of the mass in the body okay even if various forces are acting on it it won't change okay the continuous distribution of mass say for example this is a body and the mass is distributed in all the directions okay even if there is uh, different forces are acting on it 
that doesn't affect the mass of the body is what this continuum states and it does not have any empty space or voids in it voids are nothing but the empty space okay there is no presence of empty space in case of the bodies that we consider here during solving of problems friends now coming to the very important part of the discussion that is definition of force what is a force any action that tends to maintain or alter the motion of the body is called as a force so acceleration we already know it okay velocity with respect to time is called as acceleration in this case acceleration is directly proportional to the external force acting on a body and it is inversely proportional to the quantity of matter present in that body okay how many particles are there of what quantity that is inversely proportional to the acceleration as well as the amount of external force acting on a body okay now discussing about the different system of forces acting on a body say for example this is a body okay it has all the different kinds of forces acting on it okay coming from all the different direction all the system of forces act on this particular body they can act towards the body or away from the body irrespective of okay transmission the forces or the system of particles can be okay of different quantity okay now so this is what you learn about the system of forces discussing about the principle of transmissibility of the forces okay so what is this particular thing that is principle of transmissibility of forces in simple words if i have to say if you consider this square block okay this is point a and this is point b okay so if this particular point this is called as point of action okay so if the force is acting in this direction okay the amount of force that is acting at this point is same as the amount of force that is acting on this point this is what the principle of transmissibility of forces says okay for example if 200 newton of force is acting in this direction the same amount of 200 kilo 200 newton acts in this direction as well okay 200 enters and it goes out in a same way without changing your magnitude this is what the principle of transmissibility says any force acting at a point can be replaced by the same magnitude of force at some point of uh, same line on the action that is in the action is going to take place in the same direction okay it doesn't change the condition or the motion of the object is what the principle of transmissibility of the forces says begin with the discussion of the problems let us discuss about some basic important formulas to solve the problems then we'll discuss about the resolution of forces and all the problems so to begin with let us start with the par parallelogram law so this is a parallelogram that is that you can see here this is of the magnitude p this is of the magnitude q and this is the resultant r okay acting in this direction so this is oa ob and oc okay you know this so the derivation of this usually will never be asked just if this state you okay to state the parallelogram's law you have to state if two forces emerging from the same point act in two different directions the resultant of it acts exactly in the middle of it okay this is what is a uh, prerequisite statement for this particular parallelogram law okay and the angle made between the two uh, okay two magnitude of forces is alpha okay the angle made with p and q is alpha and it our resultant is passing exactly through the middle of it okay so these are the important formulas you have to remember to solve the problems that is r square is equal to p square plus q square plus 2 pq cos alpha so r square that is resultant square is equal to this p square plus q square plus 2 pq cos of angle made between p and q okay in order to calculate alpha you have a formula that is tan inverse of q sin alpha sin of this angle divided by p plus q cos alpha so these are the two different formulas you have to remember with respect to parallelogram law discussing about the triangle law we have already studied it in lower classes also so if this is okay point p this is point q okay there are two vectors acting in the same direction the resultant vector will ask, act in the opposite direction that is r 
So this is the normal triangle law that we have already studied and you already know it. We need not discuss more about this. Polygon law is nothing but, so if there are two or more forces, let us for safer side consider four different forces, okay. So these are the four different forces acting in the same direction that is force A, force B, force C and force D. So the resultant vector for this will act in the opposite direction. Okay, from the starting point to the end point in the opposite direction, the resultant, resultant will act. So this is what is the polygon law. Discussing about the very important theorem in order to solve all the problems in this uh, okay, chapter, that is Lamy's theorem. What is Lamy's theorem? So this is the point O. There are three forces emerging out of it. P, Q and R. Angle made between P and R is beta. Angle made between Q and P is delta, um, gamma. Angle made between Q and R is alpha. So this means P, opposite to P, what is the angle? Alpha. So P divided by sin alpha, which is equal to Q. Opposite of Q is beta, so sin beta. Okay, Q divided by sin beta. Opposite of R is what? Gamma. So R divided by sin gamma is what? The Lamis theorem. In order to solve the cable related problems in this, lam, uh, in this chapter, you'll have to learn Lamis theorem. It is very important. So discussing about the sine rule and cosine rule. So this is the uh, okay, particular uh, triangle. So in case of triangle itself, we'll consider both sine as well as cosine rule. So th this is the angle A, this is the angle B and this is the angle C. So what does this sine rule state? Okay, this distance is A, this distance is B and this distance is C. So A divided by the angle opposite to the side A is angle capital A. So A divided by sin A, B divided by sin B and C divided by, sorry, C divided by sin C. Okay, this is what is the sine rule. So the side and its opposite angle is what we have considered here. Side divided by opposite side for this triangle. Coming to the cosine angle, cosine rule, what is this cosine rule? Cos of angle A, that is cos of this particular angle is equal to B square plus C square. So the sides enclosing this angle is B and C, right? So first you have to add B square and C square minus the opposite side, that is minus A square divided by 2BC is what the cosine rule states. So these two formulas are very, very important in solving the problems related to cables as well as, okay, the rollers problems okay even the Lamis theorem is also equally important all the formulas coming in this uh, particular chapter that is introduction to resolution of forces you have to learn all these things these are very important now we will discuss about the resolution of forces resolution of forces say for example this is point O and there is a force of 100 kN acting in this direction so the angle made with respect to the normal okay is say for example 40 degree okay you have to resolve this force how will you resolve so if this is okay a cartesian plane so this is positive this is positive this is negative and this is negative say for example let us resolve this into x direction and y direction okay so put this in this cartesian plane so there is 40 degree and 100 kN is acting in this way. So how will you resolve it? So with respect to the x axis, whatever the angle we are going to get, that is in terms of cos. So this is 100 cos 40 because 40 degree is with respect to x axis. Now considering this, okay, with respect to y axis. So how you can resolve it? Same, 100, okay, the angle is not with respect to y axis now okay it is with respect to x axis so that is why we will be using sin 40 so hope you have understood this basic resolution so if you know about this basic resolution we will try to solve some problems so you will come to know how these problems are being solved so friends now we will solve this particular problem so they have given uh, okay different forces acting in here now so this particular force is making okay angle of tan inverse of 4 by 3 so let us take this triangle so and make tan inverse of 4 by 3 okay 
So what is tan inverse of 4 by 3? It is 53.13 degrees. So this is 53.13 degrees. Now this angle in order to calculate it, it is nothing but tan inverse of 1 by 2. So what is tan inverse of 1 by 2? That is 26.5 degree. Okay. So let's mark here 26.5 degree. Now let us resolve these forces. Okay. So if you consider this Cartesian plane. Okay. So these forces are 120 and the angle made with this is 53.13. So this is what uh, 120 cos 53.13 and this is 120 sin 53.13 so we are done with the first part now here let us discuss this so this is 200 newton acting in this direction the angle made with this is 26.5 so let's resolve it if this is 26.5 okay 26.5 degree so let us resolve with respect to x-axis so by default with respect to x-axis the angle made that we are considering cos that we already know so let us take this 200 cos of what is the angle made 26.5 opposite of that you write it here 200 sine of 26.5 we are done with this part as well now considering this point Okay, the angle 60 degree is made with respect to x-axis. So 50 cos 60 degree. So this is 50 cos 60 degree. How the? 50 cos 60 degree and this is 50 sin 60 degree. So we are done with this, as, this also. Now considering this, if this is 40, what is this? Since it is a right angle triangle, 90 minus 40 is how much? 50. So let's not consider 40 only here. So considering 50, what we have here? 100 into cos of 50 degree. Write it here. 100 cos of 50 degree. So this is, okay, the here we don't have a 50 degree with respect to x axis. So we'll consider sign. That's it. 100 into sine of 50 degree so friends you have to remember here this is negative this is positive this is positive and this is negative just add and subtract it you'll get f of x and f of y summation of f of x so summation of f of x is nothing but the forces in the x direction so we have one two three four okay add it so this direction we have to add okay so plus 200 cos of 26.5 plus 100 cos of 50 degree and minus 120 cos of 53.13 minus 50 cos 60 degree so if we calculate this what is f of x you are going to get? f of x is 146.2 Newton. Similarly, y direction will do it. So summation of f of y is equal to whatever it's taken in the upward direction that is positive, downward is negative. So here it is plus 120 sine 53.13 plus 200 sine 26.5 minus 50 into sine 60 minus 100 into sine 50. So if you calculate this, what is f of y? f of y is nothing but 65.5 Newton. Okay, we got all this. Now we are going to calculate resultant. Resultant is nothing but square root of summation of f of x square plus summation of f y square root of what is f of x here 146.2 square plus f of y is 65.5 
square. So what is the resultant you are going to get? Resultant is nothing but 160.2. Now the angle made with respect to resultant is cal calculated by tan inverse of okay f of y divided by summation of f of x. So tan inverse of what is f of y here? 65.5 divided by 146.2 so if here they have given us a problem where they have given two loads 2500 and 2500 Newton okay they are supported by a flexible string the string is A B C and D okay the string is okay attached at this particular points and B and C we have two loads 2500 and 2500 they are of equal magnitude they have asked us to calculate the tensions on AB, BC and CD. AB, BC and CD. Now let us solve it. It's a very simple problem. So consider this point B. Okay. This A is attached here. And say it's a practical thing. Okay. Alternate opposite angles. Alternate interior angles you have already studied in your uh, 8th and 9th grades. Imagine that. So this is 30 degree means this is also 30 degree. So by default it is 30 degree now this so if this is 30 degree this is also 30 degree this is also 30 degree and this is 2500 Newton okay so this is T1 this is T2 and this is T3 okay this is T1 and this is T2 and we have represented it 30 degree 30 degree and this is 2500 acting in downward direction so let us solve this problem so considering point B for point B summation of f of x is equal to so let us resolve this components so this becomes t2 cos 30 degree and t2 sin 30 degree and this becomes t1 sin 30 degree and T1 cos 30 degree okay we have resolved all the forces now let us co compile the okay point B on point B what is the summation of f of x so this is positive direction this is this becomes f of x is equal to 0 so plus T2 cos 30 minus T1 sin 30 is equal to 0 so this is summation of f of x is equal to 0 now considering summation of f of y okay so we already have it here so this becomes this is positive and this is uh, this is positive and this is negative so this is t1 cos 30 degree minus 2500 minus t2 sin 30 degree is equal to 0 so let us let us write it properly so let us write uh, sin uh, sin function uh, cos function first and sin function second so this becomes t1 cos 30 minus t2 sin 30 is equal to 2500 okay so this is our first equation and this is our second equation on solving 1 and 2 what is the thing we are going to get? T1 is equal to 4330 Newton and T2 is equal to 2500 Newton. So hope you have got it till here. So friends, now considering point C, we have to resolve all the forces. The resolution of all the forces is being seen in the figure. So do summation of fx is equal to 0. That becomes t3 sin 60 minus t2 cos 30 is equal to 0 that means t3 sin 60 is equal to t2 is how much 2500 okay into cos 30 okay now t3 is equal to sin 60 comes downside so t3 is equal to 2500 newton so this is how we have got t1 t2 and t3 so friends now let us solve this problem so this is quite interesting we have two rollers here okay this is point a point b point c and point d 
they have asked us to find out the reactions at these four points so in order to do that we have to elaborate this figure two rollers okay so this is point D this is also point D this is point A this is point C this is point B okay so now what we have 500 Newton 500 Newton okay so now what we have here there is reaction over here so this is 30 degree and this angle is also 30 degree and uh, this is 30 degree okay this is RB and this is RC and this is RD this is also RD so this has to be 30 degree and this has to be 35 30 degree so this becomes RD cos 30 degree this is RD sin 30 degree and now we have here RB cos 30 degree RB sin 30 degree here what we have we have RD sin 30 degree rd cos 30 degree now what we have we have 500 here and this is ra here we have ra sin 30 degree and we have ra cos 30 degree okay we have resolved all the components now considering the roller 2 this is considering the roller 1. So for roller 2 we will do it first. What we have? Summation of f of x is equal to 0. So x components this is Ra sin 30 in the negative direction. And what are the other components here? Rd cos 30. Rd cos 30 equal to 0. Now considering summation of f of y is equal to 0. So this we have first Rd sin 30 plus Ra cos 30 and minus 500 is equal to 0. Or else this can also be written as okay Ra cos 30 plus Rd sin 30 is equal to 500 so this is our first equation and this is the second equation solving equation 1 and 2 we have ra is equal to and rd is equal to okay ra is equal to 433 newton and rd is equal to 250 newton now considering roller 1 so what we have here sigma of f of x is equal to how much we have rd minus rd cos 30 degree and we have minus rb sin 30 degree and what all we have here plus rc equal to 0 rc minus rb sin 30 is equal to rd cos 30 so rd cos 30 is how much we already got rd 250 250 into cos 30 is how much it is 216.5 newton so rc minus rb sin 30 is this much now what we have here summation of f of y is equal to 0 so this is minus rd sin 30 so minus rd that means 
माइनस टू फिफ्टी इंटू साइन थर्टी ओके नेक्स्ट वी हैव माइनस फाइव हंड्रेड प्लस आर बी इंटू कॉस थर्टी सो इफ यू डू दिस यू आर गोइंग टू गेट आर बी आज सेवन ट्वेंटी वन पॉइंट सिक्स नाइन न्यूटन नाउ पुट दिस इन दिस इक्वेशन यू आर गोइंग टू गेट आर सी एज फाइव सेवेंटी सेवन पॉइंट थ्री फोर सो दिस इज हाउ यू हैव फाउंड आउट ऑल द रिएक्शंस एट डिफरेंट पॉइंट्स होप यू हैव अंडरस्टूड दिस प्रॉब्लम